you know, this is gnarly. Mm. And it is. The first event, there was 32 riders rocked up to it and everyone was shitting bricks. And everyone was air braking the whole way down, foot braking before the dipper. Um, and we'd done five years at Bathurst, five consecutive World Cups there. And by the end of it, no braking, you know, four people, right. two people going sideways into the dipper, you know, two Is that abreast. due to equipment, you think? Or? Confidence. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because that, particularly the dipper, and if you look at that up on YouTube, um, yeah, everyone was just sort of, yeah. if you got that one line wrong, the apex wrong, you'd end up in those hay bales there, and, and there's a lot of footage of that. So Yeah. Yeah. Just, and that was probably the second year. Um, the second year was... 120 riders rocked up and everyone was pretty green so and and as you know the track changes quite considerably so when the tarmac is is cool you don't slide as much once it starts to heat up the urethane wheels just don't grip as much so you go down that dipper and and you're dropping five meters in the space of two or three meters and you're going sideways straight to the hay bales. And as soon as you lose traction, you're gone, basically. You can't really slide and regain traction. It's too too steep a, right, apart. Okay. So you've got to really stay on that traction and rail it. Um, so, you know, you saw people carving before it, yeah. getting their entry, apexing the turn, and then coming out, you know, on the bottom side of it so they wouldn't get close to the... Um, so yeah, is that concrete barriers? Now that you're, uh, now that you've seen a lot more tracks. You you went to Europe. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that uh, so? Is Bath is still a great one in your mind, or are there? Yeah. What, Bath- what do they get into now? You know, you know, all these years later, what, do they just try and find monsters for you know? Try oh, all right. Try this one out, boys. We found a new mountain. You know, a new track. Yeah. Well, Angie's Curve pretty much brought a new level of skating. Um, the last couple of years, and the, that? the scene, Angie's Curves, out out back San Diego, sort of in the mountains in, um, yeah, Southern California. California. Yeah. Um, it's a private property, private road, and it's gnarly, and they're going, you know, they're sliding 30 metres in, into corners, um, going over 100 k's, and, yeah, it's, it's next level. And probably a lot of the crew were shitting, shitting bricks basically right, yeah. Yeah, up to it. But um, when when events are put on, people just you know accept it and and try and stay safe and get down it. But the level of riding now, especially because free riding's become such a such a big part of the sport, a lot of it is video footage now of kids riding down hills doing stand ups. Right. So stand up slides is is a big aspect of the sport, and aesthetically it's it's cool, you know, doing hillside stand ups for fifty meters, right. a hundred foot slide is yep. is, you know, almost a standard these days. Is that down to gear, like your, your wheels, like a, you know, what I mean, if me a dummy question, like is that the wheels or just your technique? Well, the quality of wheels does does make it easier. The softer the wheel, the easier it is is to slide. The, I suppose, um, whatever your preference is, if you like a a slidey wheel, then you'll slide further. So a harder durometer urethane will effectively let you slide longer. But getting that regrip and and go again is the the perfect, I suppose, medium of what you're comfortable with. So people are sliding from 78A urethane, which is a, quite a soft one, anywhere up to sort of 85A now. So of that range, there's probably 78A, 80A, 81, 82, 83, okay. you know. So all these different durometers are what people get used to and define. And then there's round lip wheels, there's, um, you know, square lip wheels, which will regrip better. The round lip will give a lot easier, so to initiate the slides easier with them. Okay. It, it, it's, right. a, it's almost getting technical well, <laughs> nowadays. Ha- and, yeah. 
it, it's all feel, right? Developing, Especially yeah. at 100Ks. Like, it would be feel, you know, I know what this, these wheels are. I know exactly what I chose here and, you know, I hope it works today. Woompa, <laughs> you know. Yeah, confidence in your equipment and, and your own abilities on your equipment is the biggest biggest yeah. thing. Um, the kids are going crazy out there. Like, right. now we're in the Masters. This is the first year the Masters is, is going to be on. And, um, yeah, we're, we're lucky we can race the old the old boys and not have to, you know, go so hard out with the Opens. Isn't it funny, man? You look young. Like, it, is it funny now we're 40 that we're old boys? But it does, just doesn't feel that way. I'm sure in this day and age now, we're a lot younger. We've grown up with BMXs. You know, we were, yeah. if you, when we were kids and they just discovered BMXs, you know, in my life, our, the 40-year-olds then, they didn't ride bikes at all. You know, my old man doesn't ride a bike, you know. Yeah. But yeah. we, we actually had a lot more being a kid time. So now we're actually 40. These we're Masters things kids. are, I'm like, man, I'm just, you know, just, I still feel like I'm 20. I look out these eyeballs and yeah. I feel, feel pretty fit, you know. Yeah, you're, so, as only, you're as only as old as you feel, really, yeah. aren't you? So, so that's so. great to think that the, there's a Masters for downhill uh, skateboarding. You made me think of doing, if you stand beside a highway, and that people are doing 100Ks. You know, cars are so good now that 100 just feels like, oh, yeah, we're going quick. But it's rare that you'll stand beside a highway and, and watch a car just go straight by you at 100Ks and you go, damn, that's fast. Mm. You know, and what would happen if that car hit another car? Just bang and stop. You know, it, it must be freaky and frightening to watch some dude on a, a piece of wood go past you on a mountain. <laughs> you know, what sort, of, what sort of safety gear do you have then? Do you have any sort of neck protection and... They do like people to have back protectors under their leathers. We're in full leathers, uh, full face helmet, uh, gloves is your standard. Um, the leathers have got knee pads and elbow pads in them and, and so forth. But, yeah, it's, you know, people free riding these days are just free riding in a helmet and gloves. Right. They don't even wear knee pads these days, which is silly, you know, um, because skin's, <laughs> skin's soft and it. Once it hits asphalt, it's gone. So, you know, the for myself, um, my son skates. He's eleven, and he's not allowed to step on his skateboard without full protection, which is, you know, helmet, gloves, knee pads, and elbow pads. Because, mm-hmm. yeah, we right. he needs to go to school the next day. Yeah, but do you show him uh, what you do? Yeah, he do, he downhills. Does he? Yeah. Wow. He's got to about. 70 k's on his board so wow yeah he's grown up with it so he okay. he's comfortable um i suppose controlling his speed at any time he can drop a foot brake and and stop okay so if there's a car or anything he's he's able to control his speed to you know his level of confidence so Great. i've got i've got confidence that he can get to the bottom of the hill and he can he can ride safely and He's aware of surroundings and aware of other riders and know that he's got to hold his line. And Yeah, so when you are skating with a lot of people, that's, that's where the, some of the danger comes into it as okay. well. If people crash in front of you and you're going that fast, you've got yeah, right. no option but to tackle them, almost plough into them. So, yeah, they're, downhill skaters are aware of the risk. We want to do it we want to continue to do it so the safety aspect of the sport is is something that everyone holds in high regard um especially when we're sharing the roads with mm. with cars and so oh, forth yeah. so uh, no doubt you'd you'd have a few uh injured mates you know no doubt yeah uh, in your in your crew there'd be oh, i i can remember you know, in the last few years, hearing a, about a couple of guys in northern New South Wales, or one, you know, actually a guy on my street my, in Kurrumman Valley. He, he wasn't one of you guys, though, but they took on... I live on a really steep st- street. I came home to these two skateboarders waving me down in my own driveway. I'm like, what, 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 what? It's my wife and I. And this this, bloke, this kid, he, he would have been about 17, 18. He tried to take on our hill without, you know, just on a normal half-pipe skateboard, whatever. Yeah, yeah. And, mate, there was brains coming out of his ear. He was in a really bad way. Yeah. But um, 
you know, that, and that was just due to the fact of him, him coming off and his head hit backwards. You know, yeah. just a, 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 I still don't know his, what became of him, to be honest. It yeah. plays on me every time. Yeah. But I, I've seen firsthand what happens if you... Yeah, yeah. we've had a, um, one of our good mates who was a, uh, a filmer, producer, he produced a movie. Um, he was making a documentary on, on downhill skateboarding um, and its culture and so forth. Got to the end two months, I think, and he was um, filming for the, for the documentary and him as the filmmaker was confident enough where he wanted to take on Burring Bar Range. Came off at the bottom by hitting wheels with one of the other guys and hit the back of his head and, yeah, got a swollen brain, passed away. Wow. So we have seen, you know, the danger side of it. We've lost friends over it. Um, he was wearing a helmet and a lot of people do. The one that you're, you've probably seen wasn't, so there are aspects of people bombing hills without helmets. In any longboard video, the community will be quite harsh and give a lot of online hate towards videos that are up without safety gear, without helmets especially. Big, big push to promote the sport safe, safely, uh, and helmets just a given that you don't put up a um, a skateboarding a longboarding video online without a helmet, otherwise they cop it um, yeah. from the community. But you know, outside people probably you know brush it off as a loose sort of thing. But no, it's a serious. When you are dealing with a sport that can inevitably, you know, an accident can happen and someone can die, then you know, it's with every extreme sport. I suppose that's the that's the risk that that we all sort of share and and value life more than anything. So yeah, it's just a part of it. I suppose it's the same as big wave surfing. You can drown, or you know, motocross riding. You can yeah. hit your head, or so. Yeah, but like you said before, there's something special about that that plays on people's minds. That are going fast, completely alone. And the the bitumen of the road, you know, we all get we get like this fear about you guys, like mm. that you're standing up on a on a fast piece of wood. We know how fast it is, like but, you know. Understand when we yeah. think about a surfer going into a huge hundred foot wave, you know, like yeah, I watched it on my phone. Wow, he took a big wipe out there. It's still a mystery, but because, I guess because we feel that that bitchman every day like damn yeah. if you hit your head on that and we've all done it growing up it's yeah. a it's, i think it's a different feeling you know it translates more yeah well, it's a hard one to comprehend because i don't mean to dwell on that no, i no. don't dwell, but i'm actually just yeah, from the heart it. going that's <laughs> what it's all about when i actually hear about you guys and seeing what happens like yeah. whoa and we all know the uh the the bloke that drives out of the driveway without completely looking in his car you know it, I live in the Coromandel Valley, so there's mountains and hills everywhere. I've seen, yeah. you know, guys on bikes doing it and just like, wow, mate, you're, you're living, definitely living, having the ultimate rush, the ultimate rush that everyone is frightened of. You're doing it, you yeah. know, and... Uh, I suppose that's what keeps us coming back. Must be, eh? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> do you think <laughs> Don't that, really think about yeah, it Yeah, of course much. you, you don't. just do it. Yeah, of course <laughs> you don't. You're locked in. That's right. You're... you're, yeah. you're We're, that's we what do you do. That's yeah. the thing. It's a great thing talking to people from different deals, you know. Yeah, yeah. You know, you could you live on a skateboard, but lo- you know, from a community aspect, us as 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 the community don't look at it as as something that gnarly. I suppose we just it's what we do, so we get comfortable, you know, doing it, and we want to do it again. So we want to try and be sa- as safe as possible and educate the the newcomers to the sport that there is risks but it's enjoyable and once you go out there and you get hooked then you'll keep coming back yeah. you know and it's not noisy it doesn't have an engine no. you know in effect it's uh yeah it's a green sport yeah it really <laughs> is it really really is yeah is it hard for people to watch but like uh 
Like, for know. that reason, that very reason of like, oh, I don't want to see, you know. Yeah, my wife probably finds it hard. Yeah. Uh,